Yeah, but where was the body? Uh, it was in electrical. I was fixing the wires. I was in navigation. I was in chill. I was in the cafeteria. I was in the cafeteria with pink and blue. and so sus. Yeah, you're definitely really sus. Like, yeah. I, I saw you near it's the body. It's kind of weird. Yeah. It is. We were in wires with the dead body. So, who are we voting out? I think that's quite obvious who we're voting out. Yeah. Blue. 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 This is Dara and Stella, here to talk about something serious that has been going on at the middle school for years now. And that thing is former RMS student Charles Nile. Most of you have probably heard about him and his story. But if you haven't heard about him, you are lucky. Charles, who was also known as Charlie, was the son of a former sixth grade English teacher at RMS. October 30th, 1995, exactly 25 years ago, is the day everything changed for Charlie. It was a normal day after school. Charlie and his friends were playing hide and seek when he mysteriously went missing. It was never to be seen again. His last known location was in the basement of the school. Our head custodian at RMS can confirm what we think are sightings of him. Here is a quick interview with him. Have you ever came encounter with Charles Nile? Yes, I have. About every time I go down in the basement. Can you tell his presence is there? or how, What makes you think he's there? It was just a funny feeling every time I go down there, like somebody's watching me. Do you see anything? No, I feel a cold breeze on my neck. Oh, that's creepy. You heard it here, folks. After Mark told us this, we knew we had to investigate. Here's some footage of the basement of RMS. Welcome our mess to the special Halloween episode of ZBN. Today, I'm dressed up as a bee. And I'm a towel. Hey, Maddie. What is Halloween really about besides getting candy? Good question, Rachel. Halloween is a holiday celebrated each year on October 31st. And Halloween 2020 will occur on Saturday, October 31st. The tradition originated with the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, when people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. Seems spooky. Right. Okay, so over time, Halloween evolved into a day of activities like trick-or-treating, carving jack-o'-lanterns, festive gatherings, gun and costumes, and eating treats. What else can you tell us about Halloween, Maddie? The boundary between the world of the living and the dead became blurred. On the night of October 31st, they celebrated Samhain, when it was believed that the ghost of the dead returned to Earth. Cool. Also, in the 8th century, Pope Gregory III designated November 1st as a time to honor all saints. Soon, All Saints Day incorporated some of the traditions of Samhain. The evening before was known as All Hallows Eve and later Halloween. 
cool. But fun fact, did you know that one quarter of all candy sold annually in the U.S. is purchased for Halloween? Really? Yeah. Stop being so boring. Tell me more about Halloween. Well, Rachel, we don't have a lot of time. But we hope to see you safely trick-or-treating, RMS. Bye, mortals. Hi, I'm Marley. And I'm Stella. Today we are talking about things you should keep in mind while going out for Halloween. Here are a few things to take into consideration while trick-or-treating. We want you to be as safe as possible. Make sure you are looking for cars while crossing the road. Never walk alone. Always try to stay in a group. Never eat candy that looks like it has been opened. Never enter a home of someone you do not know because you never know what could happen. Ask your parents if they have a flashlight, just in case it gets too dark. Dress in warm clothes, just in case it gets cold. We don't want you to get sick. Those are just some of the few things you can take in consideration while having fun. Have fun, but stay safe. Hi, my name is Harrison. And I'm Grant. And welcome to ZBN Sports. We have a lot to talk about because of all the seasons ending and starting. So let's just get into it. So first of all, football season has ended. But a new season has started. What is the new season? Basketball. Basketball will soon start for boys and girls. But the volleyball season has ended. Now, I'm going to be interviewing Mr. Bailey about the new basketball season. Hi, Mr. Bailey. Hello. So, the new season is starting for basketball, right? Correct. November 9th. Okay. So, what grade do you coach for basketball? I officially coach 8th grade, uh, but the 7th and 8th grade practice together and play on the same nights we travel together, so we kind of all do it together, 7th and 8th grade. That's cool. What difference would you make to the last season if you could? Uh, as a coach, the goal is to always uh, get the players uh, able to play well enough that I don't need to coach. So it's just continuing to drill and drill and drill. Um, so hopefully it gets to the point where they can play without me coaching. I can just sit and watch. So originally, what made you decide that you wanted to coach basketball? Well, I've loved basketball my entire life. Um, had the opportunity to coach some younger kids when I was in college, and I really liked it, so uh, I've been coaching ever since. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. And now we have another interview with a basketball player. Over to that! We'll be interviewing Owen today for a basketball season. How do you expect this season to go? I expect this year to go fairly well. We've had some kids leave, and we have gained a few. So I, I'm hoping and expecting this year to go pretty good. What do you want to work on this season, like shooting, dribbling? Uh, this year I hope to work on my passing and dribbling skills. What skills are you best at? I don't know, honestly. I don't, I guess I'm not really good at, really good at any of them. Like, super good. What made you want to play basketball? Just being able to play sports with my friends and just the interaction. And I like sports too. Okay, thank you, Owen. Yep. Have thank nice you, day. Owen, for that wonderful interview. And thank you for watching, RMS. Have a nice day. Hi, my name is Rachel Ways. I'm with our judges today, Mrs. Cripe and Haley Durkis. So for you who have not watched Shark Tank, I'm going to give a quick rundown. Each contestant is going to have exactly 30 seconds to get the presentation. Then afterwards, the judges are going to judge on which presentation they like the best. Hi, my name is Harrison Dunwoody, and I am from Rochester Middle School. I believe that the best candy on the earth is Sour Skittles. I think this because it's like Skittles, an amazing candy, but it fits a lot of people on the earth's personality. It's a little bit sour and then it fizzles out over time. <laughs> it is the best candy because you can eat it however many times you want and it sometimes hurts through your mouth, but all good things have a consequence. They're just an amazing can candy overall, and time to right. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rich Ways, and the best candy bar of all time is easily the Twix bar. So, why is it the best candy bar, you might ask? Because it has chocolate, caramel, and a cookie. Literally, that's three desserts in one. Boom. Obviously, it's the best because it's just the most filling and it's the most delicious of any candy bar. Now see, it's the only candy bar that I'd be willing to break off my braces with, obviously. And it's the only candy bar that like I would actually be willing to eat. Like, I mean, I don't really like candy that much, but the Twitch bar is the bomb, like, candy bar all the time. Hi, I'm Maddie Colville, 
and I am from Rochester, Indiana, and my favorite candy is Three Musketeers Bar. The reason why I like Three Musketeers Bar is because I've had braces for almost three years now, and it's the easiest thing to eat without breaking off your brackets. Also, I just like how it's soft and smooth, and I can just eat it without my mom asking me. So, and I also like it because it is very good, it has a nice chocolate taste to it, and if you have a friend that likes eating Twix bars, unfriend them. And I just think it's all around great, and that's why. Oh, okay. So what are your thoughts about the Shark Tank presentations that we've had today? I think they were all good, but my personal favorite was Harrison because his was a little more persuasive than the others. What about his presentation was persuasive to you? The way he just told me how sour skittles were the best. He actually gave reasons about why they were the best and not his personal opinion or well they were his personal opinion but not why he liked them the best. I like how he, yeah I like how he compared it to uh, the candy and how it compared it to life and people in life. I like how it compared it to that. I also liked how uh, Rachel compared the Twix bar that she was willing to risk breaking off the brackets to her braces for the Twix bar. To me that was commitment. That is something I don't think I would ever hear someone say about yeah. them having braces but I, that was pretty good. But I also liked what Coble said about not breaking off her braces. She was committed to keeping her braces safe because she'd had them so long, because she knows that they're expensive, and that she talked about the creaminess of the uh, Milky Way candy bar. So they all three had compelling reasons as to why their candy was the best. So this is going to be kind of a hard decision. Yeah. What is your personal favorite? Uh, I don't know. I could eat anything, I guess, but... I don't know. <laughs> hmm. I think it kind of goes with the mood, doesn't it? Yeah. Welcome back, and thank you for waiting while we made our decision. Would you like to uh, give them the results? After a long discussion, we decided that the best candy is Harrison. Yes! I was wondering what a candy competition was. Oh! Okay, American Idol, you're at home. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. You're so ugly. Like, what's the hairstyle you're trying to do? A mop? Yeah. Grant, I can't even understand you. You sound like a mix between, like, a caveman and a Charlie Brown adult. Yeah. Harrison, you're so nice that all the girls come from miles away to meet you. Thank you. Grant, you're the type of person who would put their phone in a microwave to try and charge it. Probably. Harrison, you're so ugly. Sometimes I mistake you for Spongebob. Okay. Grant, you have the IQ of when dinosaurs were alive. About negative, negative 66 million. Harrison, you're so dumb when teachers look at your assignments, they just say this kid gets an F. Okay. Grant, your style level of clothing is about the same as Russell Westbrook's. You, Not good. You literally have chicken legs, Harrison. Where are you talking? That's fair. Grant, you look like a goat and not the cute ones. Harrison, you're so ugly to the point where your mom loves you. That's fair. Grant, it takes a 10 minute bus drive to go from your eyes to your hairline. <laughs> you're so ugly. I don't have anything else to say about you because you're so ugly. Grant, you sound like a British person trying to mockingly do an American accent. Harrison, you're literally, I don't know, I don't have any more. Shoot. I'll just go off your head. <laughs> you're so ugly. Like, what's the point? You're so perfect that all the girls come from miles to meet you. Perfect. Grant, your hair looks like a bird's nest. No, an eagle's nest. <laughs> <laughs>